This week on Lemons Car Spotting. Hey, it's Nick and Eric. This is Lemons Car Spotting. Post your pictures on Instagram with the hashtag Lemons Car Spotting. We'll find the highlights and talk about them. Oh. Yeah. Yes. What a starting point. Just uh, shooting break. Is this, is this a storm or an impulse? Nobody cares. Um, <laughs> Uh, wow. Uh, I knew that they, they sold these with the weird hatchback that might be removable a la the Nissan Pulsar Sportback NX, except it's some derivative of General Motors. Uh, it's got a body kit on it, which is kind of rad. Um, uh, color keyed wheels. Uh, a, the nose obviously influenced Saturn by the way. And I had never noticed that to know, but it has the half flip up headlight um, where wow. the, the eyelids come up on these things. Um, I think this one's technically an impulse, um, but I don't know. They're all the same um, in theory. These are kind of okay cars for lemons. Uh, I don't, I'm probably still in class C. I don't know. I don't know what else there's to say about a panel wagon Isuzu Impulse, but there it is. And it's pretty sweet. I mean, talk about, I mean, let alone this specific model not existing anymore. Like anything like this doesn't exist anymore. Like a weird, it, it's too, I mean, compared to like a, like a, whatever, a two door golf, three door golf, like those are much more upright. This has a much more like station wagon y profile than it does a hatchback. Um, and of course it's a two door, you know, so, um, they just don't make anything like that anymore. Uh, much like the Ferrari 250 GTO. So I think pretty yeah. sweet. Pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh dude, it's a Gallant VR4. Now, is this the car? There's one car that, you know, real diehard DSM people. I'll let that set in for a moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is one car that they refer to as being sort of like the Lancer Evolution Zero or Evolution One, you know, sort of before they started calling it that. Um, or maybe it's just a U.S. thing where we didn't get yeah. the Lancer Evo until much later that the Gallant VR4, which we did get, is essentially the same thing <laughs> and, yeah. and has the same performance potential. Maybe that's true. I don't know. But uh, this is a car that you never see. Um, I think it did have that turbo 4G63, uh, you know, which means it's a wastegate spring and a chip tune away from 1,400 horsepower, and you'll be gapping fools or whatever it is the kids are doing yeah. these days. Um, I don't see any downside to that plan. Um, no. So, yeah, I don't know. Kind of cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh when has Mitsubishi ever had endurance racing problems? Um, you know, yeah. totally, yeah. totally perfect for this. Uh, and the all wheel drive system, no doubt is not complex or has parts that are totally non-existent in the rest of the world. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Ooh, ah. Is this a Fiat? It's a Renault oh, it's a 8. Renault 8. Uh, this yeah. comes from our friends at Motorpunk. Uh, that's, Rich Duisberg, who uh, actually just raced at the 24 Hours of Lemons right before we are recording this in New Hampshire. Uh, it was great to meet him in person. A, a top, top of bloke, as they would say. Renault 8. What do I know about the Renault 8? Uh, nothing. I assume the engine's in the back, but I don't it, know that. It um, is. <laughs> uh, it's probably about 56 horsepower. Uh, probably handles okay. Those wheels are absolutely bonkers on that thing. I don't, I do not understand that aesthetic. Uh, this one's obviously in the middle of quote unquote restoration, I guess. Uh, any Renault is a good car for lemons. I have always had a, a strong affinity for very square box shaped cars. Of course, yeah. a long time BMW 2002 owner. I like the 510. I like the Alpha Julia sedan. And I really like the Renault 8. I mean, it might be the squarest of them all. Yeah. There is, of course, the Gordini version, which was the uh, sports racing, which had, you know, a 1300 instead of an 850 or whatever the regular one had. Um, yeah. Always wanted one of these. Uh Maybe I'll get one someday. <laughs> yeah, you got that going for you. Uh, 
I don't. It looks vaguely Fiat one thirty one ish to me. Also, it does although they're really little. It's like one yeah. step below size of all of those cars we just mentioned. Yeah. So yeah, pretty cool. Oh. Oh man. <laughs> oh God. I almost want to defer to you for this as a resident scort enthusiast. You know, my initial thought with those wheels and that wing that this was going to be some kind of civic, but no, yeah. it was somebody, I mean, this is from Brett's Boston beaters. I yeah. would have thought for sure this was in Cincinnati. Um, somebody has taken the uh, modification aesthetic of a mid nineties, a uh, California resident and applied it to a Ford Escort sedan. A a am I getting all of that right? Yeah, you're on the money. Uh, man, uh, it looks vaguely WRX-ish, I guess. I think that's what they're going for. Uh, boy, uh, I'm kind of grossed out by it, frankly. As, <laughs> as, as a Ford Escort guy, even this is a little much for me. Um, I want to say that those wheels, whatever they are, those aftermarket wheels are the ones that they had on the Civics in the first Fast and Furious movie. Yeah, probably They're very so. of that time. The best part is when you do all of this modification, you do all these things to make it look that way, and you open the door to get in, and then the seatbelt starts running on the track. <laughs> I, I was going to say exactly that. Yeah. It's like, yeah, instead of getting into a, you know, a 90s, you know, Honda, like really well-designed, thought-out interior, it's just e <laughs> seatbelt going by. <laughs> That's like the number one thing I associate with of Ford Escorts of this era is yeah. that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Oh, man. It might be so the – here's a random piece of useless Ford Escort trivia. They put the GT motor in a very small number of sedans. It was like the GTS or LTS or something. It was the Tracer LTZ. I don't know why I know that, but – uh there you go. So this this you could know, be I just order. saw at a cars and coffee, of course. I just saw one of the tracers with the twin cam in it. Yeah. I thought that that was the LTS. I don't know. Yeah. Tell us about the tracer <laughs> twin cam option in the comments. That's right. Uh but uh yeah, I had no idea it existed. It was teal with the red stripe, of course. Of and, course. Um, yeah. You know, that would be a pretty good car. Whether or not this is that or the much less exciting 1.9 four-cylinder, um, I couldn't tell you. All right. Oh. Ah, of course. Yeah. Can't not have this. A, a frequent flyer. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, again, I was in New Hampshire for the race recently, and I saw one of these on the side of the road for a sale, and I did not stop. Um because I was afraid <laughs> I was going to catch something. Uh, but yeah, this is, of course, the... Uh, I thought you um, said you were afraid you were going to buy it. <laughs> oh, God, no. Uh, I mean, <laughs> by all means, you should, because you'll win trophies at Lemons events for it. I don't need this in my life. Um, <laughs> this is the Chrysler TC by Maserati. There's a couple of these, a couple different engine choices, all of them, quote, unquote, tuned by Maserati mm -hmm. as... As yeah. you would no doubt believe, uh, there was a Turbo 4 that was like the, uh, yeah, so there was Chrysler Turbo, and they have different stages. Of right, course. Turbo 2, Turbo the, 3, right. This was the Turbo 2, I believe, and the Turbo <laughs> 3 was the Dodge Spirit RT uh, tw <laughs> twin cam with a turbo <laughs> and an intercooler. Because why wouldn't you put that on a Dodge Spirit? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think this is the stage two. I'm sure someone in the comments will correct me. They also built a Mitsubishi V6 version of this. Um, Which is not what I mean, you want, I would assume. <laughs> Mazurbishi Mitsurati. <laughs> I don't know what you'd call that. Uh, but yeah, um, I don't know how to differentiate between them. But those are the engine options for the TC by Maserati. Which... It will be pointed out to you, should you ever run across one, is not a Chrysler LeBaron, nor do they have anything in common. They're no, totally different. Completely totally different. separate deal. If you look it up in the parts book, you got to look under Maserati. Yep. Yeah, I, I feel like that there was something about, you know, people tuning their Daytona IROC or whatever, Daytona RT, 
that the cylinder head from this is the one that you want because it's tuned by Maserati. I, I do appreciate the just sort of satisfying aesthetic of pulling up in your Daytona, popping the hood and having it say Maserati. I mean, that's yeah. kind of neat yeah. <laughs> in a real dumb way. Yeah. If you're going to be saddled with the Daytona, this is the only thing you can do to feel better about it. So True. Uh, all right. Last car of the week. Oh, God. We're back into this just real <laughs> amazing that it still exists J car territory. Yep. This is a Cavalier drop top <laughs> god it's really an early one too this looks like you know a, i don't know what years these were but early to mid 80s as opposed to late 80s 90s um i'm trying to read the deck lid badge does it say 2.0 f41 on it it does man f41's got to be the handling package uh, that sounds a lot like it's got the handling package that does nothing aside from ride so badly that it makes the rear view mirror fall off. <laughs> uh, but uh, 2.0, what, which 2.0 would that have been? I know that some of these had Opal motors. Some of them had Iron Dukes. It's neither uh, of those. It was the push rod. I think they called it the 122 was the engine or something like that. But they used this horrible push rod engine is the same one they put in the trucks in the 90s s10 base engine the 2.2 okay. 2 liter yeah. before that it was a two liter and a one eight before that even uh just i mean it sounds like somebody threw marbles into industrial machinery is the exhaust note of these things it's just amazing to me that general i mean that uh, granted american cars were maybe a little bit later to the four-cylinder party than european makes but God, by the 80s like good lord it's like alpha and bmw four cylinders were by that point 20 years old and you still couldn't make anything that was even remotely as good as those two options yeah so yeah. man Ooh. well let's get to the hoopiest um which this is a strong contender i will say uh um you know in the top five, I know Anton Lovett raced one of these in the second gen. Yeah. The convertible conversion is literally were made with a Sawzall and some welding reinforced them. Yeah. I'm sure they're totally fine to drive. Uh, the Impulse that we started with, great. The VR4 that quote unquote needs restoration is in there. But I got to go with... Uh, the Wings Midwest level of tuning <laughs> on the Ford Escort. Uh, obviously, the Wings Midwest body kit right here. Oh, That's absolutely. Beautiful thing. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with that. It's got full, you know, I, we, we've said it before and people have gotten mad at us. But, you know, the <laughs> midnight racing uh, Muncie edition. <laughs> you know, from the streets with a Z of Akron. Yeah. But uh, anyway, that's just our big city elitism uh, poking through. Yeah. I've got the lemons build. Um, I want to see a Geostorm panel wagon yeah. <laughs> racing on a road course. Yep. Very simple. I want it with these wheels and tires. Uh, I think yep. that the fitment is uh, spot on. Um, definitely want it with the vinyl panel covering over the rear glass and uh yeah uh do handling by lotus or whatever you need to do to make it race worthy and uh done deal that's a blank canvas right there that's ripe for a theme lots of area to coat there with paint so uh you could you do anything with that yeah. um kind of looks like a shoe so making a car into a big shoe pretty solid choice all right, that'll do it for this week of Lemons Car Spotting. Keep tagging your Instagram photos with hashtag Lemons Car Spotting, and we'll find them and we'll talk about them. That's totally a Judge Phil dream. It's the theme as giant object. Uh, yep. He, of course, wanted the giant fist racing around the track, but, um, you know, I could see the giant shoe. Yep, or a foot, just a foot. <laughs>